Hi there, my name is Timmy Joe, and I am currently playing Grand Theft Auto, which might not seem so weird, but, uh, you know what, it doesn't look so bad, I'm shooting some people, it's pretty fluid, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty alright, and you might say, well, what's so crazy about that? Well, I'm getting 45 frames a second on this, well, not, not the, this one, I got two of them, but this is the NVIDIA Quadro 600, I mean, what, what what's the point what's what's the deal what is this thing this is a uh, card from about 2010 11 that was put in workstations meant for some medium ish cad work uh, photoshop work what have you and i'm playing grand theft auto uh, mind you at 720p at about 45 frames a second and it doesn't look all that bad now does it so q an intro and we're gonna look into the potato 5000 or uh, quadro 600 we should say and we're gonna see what is this card what good is this card in, in 2017 and why am i talking about it and is it even worth anything <laughs> Hi there. You know what? I'm not putting rose-colored glasses on the Potato 600 here. This, um, by all, you know, whatever, stretches of the imagination, is a pretty obsolete card. Except for a few things, and I wanted to talk about this. So I got this, uh, and another one exactly like it, uh, in a Dell Precision Workstation, uh, Xeon PC, that I use for my home file server, something uh, I might not use for too much longer, but uh, I fed uh, some cables through the wall and I also use it as my main PC on my home theater. Uh, so, um, you know, it's pretty cool to get two of these in there and I use them for a little bit and I usually put some sort of game worthy GPU in that machine uh, because it's a Xeon, basically a Core i7 that can run video games, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll play the newest titles on the TV if it's something that, you know, kind of works like that. But to have a Quadro uh, in there isn't so bad for media consumption. And it's a very quick driver, and uh, what I like about these cards is they're very quick to just test something. I can put them in a motherboard, whatever, and uh, they typically just work out of the box. Windows will load a driver for them, but if you you know want to download the, the Quadro driver for them, they're only like 200 megabytes, it's quick to install. Uh, but some downfalls for a home theater setup would be it doesn't actually have an HDMI out. It has DVI and uh, DisplayPort, but uh, you can get DVI to HDMI very, very easy. So so, you know, you know, that solves that. Uh, but then I had it in there in between some video cards and I accidentally opened up Grand Theft Auto on that machine and was surprised to see it was sort of running, sort of playable at 1080p. Um, you know, a little bit above medium settings. And when I mean sort of, I mean like, you know, 15 FPS. But it, it was not uh, as bad as I would have imagined with this tiny video card in it. So I thought, what does it take to actually run this, uh, you know, so you could play it? And can this even do that? And I fired her down to 720p, normal settings with a few, you know, settings bumped up to medium and or, or, or whatever, high. Uh, and I, I almost got pretty much an Xbox 360 experience in Grand Theft Auto, uh, running at like 45 frames a second, uh, with this little thing. And I was like, wow, is that ever neat that this can run that? And then I have MSI Afterburner installed on my computer, of course. So I got to thinking, can I overclock the thing? And sure as shooting, you can. Uh, so just so to get the specifications out of the way, this has, uh, 96 CUDA cores in it, okay? It's got 16 TMUs, 8 ROPs, uh, and a gigabyte of DDR3 memory running at 128-bit memory bandwidth. That is, that's no, that's not fast by any stretch of the imagination, but DirectX 11 support, OpenGL 4, 4 point something support, um, and uh, the clock speed on it, it uh, runs at 640 megahertz stock, but it'll go all the way up to 835 on the GPU and go from uh, 800 to 1040 on the memory. 
uh, which actually gives it a nice little like 15% bump in performance. In fact, uh, I've been running a little bit of Unigen Heaven in the background here, and uh, it actually sort of, well, it doesn't run worth a, a crap, but I ran uh, through two different uh, scenarios, one with the overclocking on and one with it off, and we see an increase in the benchmark from it getting a score of 242 all the way up to 318, and the maximum FPS going from 26 all the way up to 35.7. So you can, there's a little bit of overclocking headroom in this thing. Now, you know, what am I getting at? This isn't a gaming, uh, you know, card by any stretch of the imagination, but if you happen to pawn one for like $20, you can get them for like $40 on eBay. Would it be worth picking up for some sort of a home theater PC build? Well, yeah, if you you know can figure out the connector and whatever, it's got audio over uh, DVI, so it'll go to HDMI, and it'll play any emulator. I've had a Nintendo 64 emulator, uh, emulator running on this thing. I've had, you know, anything. It'll even play some eSports titles, which is pretty interesting. I had Counter-Strike running on this at 1080p at, like, 45 to 60 FPS with just like two settings turned down. Now, I wouldn't want to play on that, but it was, it was totally possible. It played um, even uh, Bioshock Infinite at 1080p. Uh, it, it played some of the newer titles, although not playable at all. So, uh, you know what, for some sort of a retro build or a, you know, a emulator machine, uh, or putting this in it, because it is a small form factor card, very small, low height on it, you could put this in, uh, you know, some sort of a small build and get some things done with it, which is pretty interesting. But I'm not going to sell this as some sort of, you know, wildly awesome gaming alternative. Uh, I'd say it, it's about equivalent with a uh, GeForce GT 710 which is by no means a good card, but you know, uh, you, you can get these for a lot cheaper. Those still sell new for like 70 bucks. So, you know, if you, if you, ha if you needed a video card and you don't have onboard graphics, this is probably better than onboard graphics and it'll do everything you want. Uh, I'm Timmy Joe. I watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I did this video just because I've been meaning to kind of show this off for a bit because I don't find any videos of this particular card on YouTube and I'm kind of impressed with it. It also is a nice, segue into a proper quadro card that I will be reviewing in the next video. Now, videos are going to be slow for uh, this week, and uh, what I wouldn't even maybe do some videos, but I, it's just I feel weird when I don't do videos. But there are some really massively cool things happening with the channel, and there's going to be an upgrade to the quality of production, uh, to the uh, stuff I'm able to get and secure for review units and what have you. And uh, I just, you know what, in the meantime, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, uh, just in case. But uh, at Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter, I just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is massive. And uh, it's totally worth hitting the subscribe button because some, some major things are happening with the channel soon. And I thank all who uh, subscribe. 10,000 people. That's, that's insane. But we'll get to a proper video and a resolution to the contest I had getting leading up to 10,000 uh, in the coming weeks. And I think you guys are going to be very pleasantly surprised that you subscribed to old Timmy Joe here. I'm at Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. I will see you guys in the next video. And if you thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button and like, comment, and all that good stuff. And I will uh, see you in the next potato video on on Wednesday. <laughs>